All right, here we go. We're going to work on some line drawing. How to use line to create an interest and show movement and depth. Okay guys, today's lesson is to practice line. And we're gonna be working at, with abstract line, how to use line to show movement and space and develop interest. First step is to take a piece of paper and fold it in half once, twice, and then thrice, three times, okay? And we're gonna, gonna unfold this And then what that gives us is eight boxes to play around with, okay? I'm using a Sharpie, and a felt tip pen, and a ruler here, okay? And what I'm gonna do first actually is out outline these boxes so you can see them a little bit better in the video. Okay, so now you can see those boxes. Now if you don't want to fold it, you can measure it out with the ruler, but the, it's, since this is practice, I figured it'd be okay just to do it this way, because it's a little bit quicker. All right, um, the first box, we're gonna work with vertical and horizontal lines overlapping, okay? And when they overlap, when you have a vertical line, okay, actually put two vertical lines here, got two vertical lines which are parallel to each other and then I'm gonna do two horizontal lines that are perpendicular to that see that so that's what we call a perpendicular line shade this one in a little bit just so you can see the difference between that so we got that really big fat line going over two smaller lines, okay? And then maybe if I do another vertical lines here, and color that in, okay? Artists use horizontal and vertical lines to overlapping to show depth and space. Because when something's overlapping, it's saying that it's behind, or it's over another line, right? So if something's going over, that means it's behind, right? Two vertical lines. Again, this one's a little shorter there. Okay, that looks pretty cool, just like that, really. You can see how this is already kind of becoming an interesting abstract drawing. Okay, and it's just using a line and a sharpie. No, in a ruler, I guess. If you don't have a ruler, you can use another straight edge, like an edge of an envelope or another piece of paper. Oops. Doesn't help though if you're bumping your armature, holding up your camera here. Okay. Okay, so that's vertical and horizontal. The next one I'm gonna do is diagonal line, okay? So I'm using a series of diagonal lines to make a little drawing, a little design. Now diagonal lines, a lot of people associate with movement. Um, people think of a horizontal line that's falling over, or sorry, vertical line that's falling over, or a horizontal line standing up rather. Sorry, I said that backwards. Okay. So what I mean by that is if you, I'm not gonna paper here. So, so if you had a horizontal line that is lying down, okay, people think of a vertical line that's starting to stand up that way, 
okay? Or vice versa, you have a vertical line just falling over, okay? In addition to that, I think people think of something that you would slide on, okay? If you happen to be sitting here, right, you'd slide right off it. Or movement, like rain, for example. Like, you're in a rainstorm, it's going really quick and it's slicing through the air. Maybe. Okay. The next one is curvy line. So curvy lines are known for being graceful. Okay, because they're graceful when you draw it. Just think about how you, when you draw a curvy line, it's very graceful. Your pencil just kind of glides, or your pen, your sharpie, it just kind of glides on the paper. Okay. You show movement and excitement using these curvy lines. Okay. All right. Then. Talk about zigzag. Zigzag is more of an aggressive line. People associate zigzag lines with aggression, anger, frustration. Because they're, if you think about it, when you draw a zigzag line, it changes directions abruptly. So in the mind's eye, the mind's eye is following a zigzag line, it changes abruptly. Okay, so if my eye is right here looking at this line. As it follows this line, it's gonna change abruptly. Okay? Whereas a curvy line, it changes, it's a very gradual change. There's a flow to it. Okay. Well, that's the zigzag line. Alright, now I'm gonna talk about line weight. Line weight is the when you have a thin line. Okay, it has less weight than, say, a thick line. Okay. And you can change your li line's weight by the way you hold your pen, Sharpie, or drawing utensil. Okay, so if I'm holding on the tip, most like and losing light pressure, I'm going to have a thin line. But if I want a thicker line and go to the side to develop a thicker line okay it's called line weight so I want you to play around with that play around with holding a pencil different to try to get different weights and thicknesses of line okay Put some diagonals in there We got a really thick line, basically a rectangle hanging out here. So thick lines will give the the feeling of strength, whereas a very thin frail line, it's gonna, you know, just that it's gonna be frail. It's gonna give the strength of a weakness, like you could break it super easily, right? Whereas these ones look like they hold their own. It would be a lot harder to break one of these ones, okay? So, line weight. Then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play around. Okay, so the next one what we're gonna do is uh, start creating some 3D um, area using line. Okay, we kind of have been doing that by using the overlap technique. And now we're gonna actually make our lines look like they're popping out. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to actually use a pencil for this. To start out, I'm gonna draw an oval or ellipse right here, okay? I'm using a pencil so I can erase it out. And I'm gonna use 
my Sharpie and a ruler, I'm gonna go do some horizontal lines. About every quarter inch or so. Okay, but when I do this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda hop up and over, continue. Horizontal, hop up and over, continue. Horizontal, hop up, oop, hop up and over, continue. Oops, messed up there. That's why maybe a pencil's good to use, right? Over. And you kind of want to follow the same contour of the first circle or jump over the ellipse or oval. If you mess up like I did, that's okay. It's no biggie, right? Because it's just practice. Okay? Don't stress if you did what Mr. Q did there. But you can see that it's looking 3D and just by using line. Okay? Okay, so I'm working that, so that worked. And then, unfortunately, you can really race that out. If it really bugged you, you could try scraping it out, but I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm talking about this little mess up here. But you can see how that, even when I erase the pencil out, how that's gonna show that form of that ellipse underneath there. Okay, now we're gonna do kind of like a, a ribbon holding. And I'm gonna do my dot up here. And when this folds over, cross that dot there. There, a little piece right there. Okay, and this should look like folds of uh, fabric, the paper. using only line. Okay, see that? Do, one, do another one right here if you want. Going to the opposite corner, so down right here. See that? It's kind of cool, right? All right, then, oh, Jesus, don't drop your Sharpie on there. Man, I'm butter fingers today. All right, next we're gonna do a zigzag line. So I'm gonna do a zigzag line. I'm gonna start with horizontal line. Go down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, I'm gonna do that again. Down, go horizontal, down, up, down, up,
Okay. And then we're gonna go through, put some vertical lines in here. And I guess the more of a diagonal on this one. Gonna connect these points. What I'm doing is I'm just kind of connecting the tips together where the rise is and then connecting where the fall is. Okay, and you can see how that gives us some 3D space there. Using the line. Okay? And if you want to get it really fancy, you can shade it and checker it, which is always kind of cool. Skipping every one, every other one rather. Gives you almost like an op art design. that's working guys thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you next time all right guys so what I ended up using was a dried out black prang marker along with my sharpie and my felt tip pen to shade that thank you